Despite the name that came from the British coin, the first pennies minted in the U.S. in 1787 were real American coinage. Their official name is one cent pieces, but most people still use the traditional foreign term. Be prepared that the 1917 wheat penny value is almost always higher than their denomination. However, most of these coins are often more common and less expensive than you probably hope. Still, they are a part of the popular series minted from 1909 to 1959 and are among the most beloved coins you can collect. Most Americans, particularly collectors, believe Lincoln wheat pennies are the most impactful national coins ever minted in the U.S. Mint. Besides, they have an exciting history and impressive background as a piece celebrating such a giant historical person like Abraham Lincoln. The 1917 pennies are a part of the series minted from 1909 to 1958, based on Victor David Brenner's creative idea. They look the same as other coins from this early period, but some are more valuable than the average. The 1917 plain-edged wheat penny has a face value of 1 cent and a diameter of 19.05 mm, 1.75 inches. Each piece is made of a 95% copper alloy and weighs 3.11 g, 0.10970 ounces. Its thickness is a modest 1.52 mm, 0.0598 inches. Even though the total mintage in three mints was 284,169,785 coins in 1917, not all pennies produced during this first war year have survived until now. That is particularly true for the highest-ranked coins that are real gems on the current market. Most wheat pennies that came from Philadelphia in 1917, precisely 196,429,785 coins, you can divide preserved pieces into three groups, from the least to the most collectible ones. For instance, brown-toned pieces are the least desirable among collectors, so you shouldn't be surprised by their low prices. Depending on their quality, you can buy one circulated coin from 1917 for $1 to $12. Even pieces in the mint state are affordable, with an average price ranging from $30 to $144. Like always, you can find a few exceptions to the rule. In this case, it is the 1,917 MS66 Brown Penny, sold at $1,125 in 2021. The 1917 Red Brown Pennies are better collectibles than brown ones, with the average price from $80 to $475 for pieces in MS63 to MS66 grades. Even the 1,917 MS66 RB penny auction record is a bit higher. It reached $1,293 at an auction in 2013. Finally, the best collectible pennies minted this year are those with high luster and attractive red coloring. You should set aside $125 for the lower-ranked pieces, MS63, while others are more valuable. MS64 graded coins assessed at $260. MS, 65 graded coins assessed at $525, MS, 66 graded coins assessed at $1, 250 MS, 67 graded coins assessed at $5,000, MS, 68 graded coins assessed at $78,000. The most expensive 1,917 MS, 68 red wheat penny won an impressive auction record of $38,813 in 2006. Have you found a penny dating to 1925 in your pocket change? If so, you might be wondering whether a coin this old is valuable. And the good news is, you've come to the right place to find out. We're going to investigate the 1925 penny value and the factors that influence it. We'll look at different mint marks and grades. And we'll check out some of the interesting error coins that have come to light. The 1925 penny is one of a series that made U.S. numismatic history. It's known as the Lincoln Penny, and it was the coin that depicted a real person on one side. The first Lincoln pennies were struck in 1909. The occasion was the centenary of the birth of the former president, Abraham Lincoln. Dot. Until then, Lady Liberty had usually featured on the obverse, or heads, side of coins. The idea of honoring a real person in this way had previously been considered too close to monarchy. But as the centenary approached, the public mood shifted. There was ever more support for a Lincoln coin, and President Roosevelt was a strong supporter of the idea. 
It was probably Roosevelt who suggested the coin designer, a Lithuanian artist named Victor David Brenner. Roosevelt himself had sat for Brenner for a portrait to appear on a medal. By the time Brenner was crafting his portrait, of course, Lincoln was long since dead. It's believed that he took his likeness from a photograph of the president taken at the studio of the celebrated photographer Matthew Brady. The earliest Lincoln pennies are sometimes referred to as wheat pennies or wheaties after the design on the reverse. That shows two ears of Durham wheat, and it's what you'll see on the back of your 1925 penny dot 50 years on. The reverse design was changed to an image of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Then the bicentenary of Lincoln's birth was marked with another change. Four different reverse designs were commissioned for the occasion, each showing a different stage in Lincoln's life. And today's Lincoln pennies show what is known as the Union Shield on their reverse. But throughout all these changes, the portrait of Lincoln has remained unchanged. That makes it the longest-running design in the history of U.S. coins. The composition of the Lincoln penny has also changed over time. The first cents, including the 1925 penny, were made of bronze, 95% copper, and 5% zinc and tin. But in 1943, the requirement for copper and tin for use in wartime munitions meant that those metals could not be spared. For that year only, the penny was made of steel instead. Over the years, the price of copper rose, and production of the bronze penny became ever more expensive. So in 1982, the composition of the penny changed again, to zinc with a copper cladding. The change kept the familiar color of the coin, but made it much cheaper to produce dot. If you compare your 1925 penny to a modern cent, you'll find it significantly heavier. And it will also make a different sound if you drop it on a wooden surface. The earlier penny will ping, while the modern one has a plasticky sound dot. While there are a number of differences between a 1925 penny and its modern equivalent, one thing is the same, the obverse design. That shows the portrait of Abraham Lincoln that has been gracing the penny for over a century. It depicts Lincoln's head and shoulders in profile, with the former president facing to the right as the coin is viewed. The artist, Victor David Brenner, said he had depicted the president as he might have looked if reading to a child. That gave credence to the theory that he based the image on a photograph taken at Matthew Brady's studio, showing Lincoln with his young son. Look closely, and you'll see Brenner's initials along the bottom of the portrait. On the earliest 1909 pennies, they appeared instead on the reverse. They were considered too prominent there, however, and were removed later that year. They were reinstated on the obverse in 1918. The familiar phrase, in God we trust, appears above the image of Lincoln. To its left is the word liberty, while the date is to the right. Pennies struck in Denver or San Francisco have mint marks, while those from Philadelphia do not. If you have a Denver coin, there'll be a small D beneath the date. A San Francisco penny will have a small S in the same spot dot red, and brown examples start at $25 at MS60. At MS65, the the list value is actually slightly lower than the brown equivalent, at $140. But go up a point, and a red and brown coin is worth around $300, compared to $225 for the brown version. If you're looking for a red penny, prices start at around $26 for an example, graded MS60. That rises to $260 at MS65, $475 at MS66, and $1,400 at MS67. The cream of the crop is a single red penny graded MS68, and the PCG's values that coin at a staggering $65,000. Hello, everyone. It's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode. These are 1977 Philadelphia samples that were heavily braided 10 cents coins that were widely distributed. As a result, they are nowhere near meeting the criteria for full band identification. Please use the build and subscribe buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times. Since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It lacks any distinctive qualities or noticeable rarities that would considerably increase its value, or collectible value. 
Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977. Roosevelt dimes in circulation often sell for less than their 10 cents face value. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. 66 was full bands, PCGs reported three examples, and guiding prices, which suggests $525. The population of Miss 67 FB in the service consists of two specimens with no finer. At the Great Collections auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These appealing toned specimens in at least 67% condition with all bands sell for $14,106.25 plus buyer's fee. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons on YouTube and keep following us there. Absolute Disorder There is no doubt that discovering a coin like this will transform your life. Now, if you truly find a coin like this, what do you need to look for and how do you sell it for the highest money? If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, do it now and let's get right into the video. The coin you're currently viewing on the screen sold at auction for $408,000 and we'll explain why in this video. This 1944 S1 cent coin was given a mint state 66 grade by PCGs. For those who are unaware, there are seven different coin grades ranging from 1 to 70. Considering that it dates from 1944, this coin received a fairly excellent grade. A little s will appear beneath the date, designating that this coin was made at the San Francisco Mint. Generally speaking, Philadelphia minted coins lack any sort of mint mark. Coins struck in Francisco have a s, coins that are struck in Denver have a d mint mark, and West Point mint coins very infrequently have a w mint mark. This coin has a KC sticker as an additional layer. Now a sticker from a different third-party company that reads, Hey, this coin is accurately greater than is applied to the holder. It's very lovely. They then affixed their sticker. You'd be amazed to learn how much value that tiny sticker adds to the coin, despite how stupid it may seem. What did this coin sell for, and why? $408,000 because it's an air coin, that is. The coin shouldn't have ever been struck on a planche made of steel that has been zinc-coated in order to condense a lengthy story. Bronze was required in the past for ammunition, so they changed into a zinc-coated steel planche similar to this one. This coin is worth this much because it was unintentionally struck on a piece of metal when it should have been on a bronze planche. Please seek out a professional and do not purchase if you come across a coin like this to be pulled off ham. We won't go into much detail about this coin, which sold for $840,000, because it is virtually the reverse of the one before it. This coin is a 1,943D. Keep in mind that the Denver Mint is designated by the letter D. This coin was struck on a bronze plant shit when it should have been struck on a zinc-coated steel plant shit, and PCGs classified it as Mint State 64 Brown. So what should you do if you come upon a coin this rare? We advise visiting at least three coin specialists and conducting your own research. Look through movies comparable to ours to check whether the coin resembles what you're seeing here for research purposes. Just keep in mind that anything that seems too wonderful to be true certainly is. Before selling the coin, conduct your own research and due diligence. We don't want you to be taken advantage of or cheated. If this video has taught you anything, Please pass it along to a friend or loved one, and we'll see you in the next one. Are you curious about the value of a 1970 dime? Whether you're a collector or looking to sell, understanding the worth of this coin is crucial. In this video, we'll dive deep into the fascinating history of the 1970 dime and uncover its potential value, from common circulated coins to rare error varieties that could fetch hundreds of dollars. Let's explore what makes these coins unique and how you can determine their worth. The Roosevelt dime has been a staple of American coinage since it was first minted in 1946. Named after President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the dime commemorates his leadership and contributions, particularly his involvement with the March of Dimes, which aimed to combat polio. Roosevelt's legacy, along with the coin's enduring design, 
makes the dime a significant piece of history. The 1970 dime, like others in the series, was initially struck in silver, but later transitioned to a copper-nickel alloy, a change that reflects the evolution of U.S. coinage over the decades. The 1970 dime features a simple yet iconic design. The obverse side showcases a left-facing portrait of President Roosevelt with the word liberty and the national motto, In God We Trust, prominently displayed. Below the president's portrait, you'll find the year 1,970 inches and the initials J.S., which belong to the coin's designer, John R. Sinek. The reverse side of the coin is equally symbolic, with a torch representing liberty flanked by an olive branch for peace and an oak branch for strength. The design is a testament to the enduring values of the United States. The 1970 no-mint mark dime is quite common, with millions produced and circulated. In general, these coins hold a value close to their face value, usually between 15 cents and 35 cents for those in circulated condition. However, the value can increase significantly for coins in better condition. For example, a coin graded MS-65, which indicates it is in mint state with few imperfections, can be worth around $10. The difference in value between circulated and uncirculated coins is an important factor to consider when determining how much your 1970 dime might be worth. While most 1970 dimes are relatively common, there are exceptions that can be worth much more. Coins with errors, such as off-center strikes or double dies, can be highly sought after by collectors. Additionally, gem-quality coins, especially those graded MS-67 or higher, can command significant premiums. For instance, while an MS-66 1970 dime might only be worth $75, a rare MS-67 can fetch as much as $565. One particularly rare example, a full-band coin graded MS-66, was sold at an auction for $2,295. These high-value variants are the crown jewels of any dime collection. If you're looking to sell or simply want to know the value of your 1970 dime, there are a few key steps to take. First, examine the coin's condition. This will play a major role in its value. Next, check for any errors or unique features that might make the coin more desirable to collectors. Finally, consider getting your coin graded by a professional service, especially if you believe it's in near-perfect condition. The combination of rarity, condition, and demand will ultimately determine how much you can expect to receive for your 1970 dime. The 1970 dime might seem like just another coin, but as we've seen, its value can vary widely depending on its condition and rarity. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just starting, understanding these factors is crucial to making informed decisions about buying or selling these coins. So, before you trade that dime, take a closer look you might be holding a hidden gem. Hello, my friends. It's time to talk about coins. All coins are valuable, even those with errors. In this video, we'll show you two currencies, an original currency and a currency with an error. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do it. Show your support for our content and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos. Our goal is to increase brand awareness and reach audiences everywhere. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and join us on this exciting journey. The two coins I'm holding are from the coin collection and were circulated in 1967. The one on the left had light to medium wear on the device motifs. Another appears to be a mistake coin, struck by an eroding die or struck through grease, as evidenced by the first letters of some motto. It also has a large diagonal crack. That's for sure not a die crack. In the event of a die crack, the line must have raised surfaces rather than gouge. It's very likely that the post-meeting damage will exceed $2.2 billion. Because 1967 Roosevelt times were struck for circulation, locating an example should be rather simple. Finding examples in circulated grades up to MS-66 condition should be easy. They are also fairly stable under MS-67 circumstances. With that modest price, almost everybody can purchase one in MS-68 conditions. They are scars with few known examples. At mid-stage 68, a sample in any condition displaying entire band detail is extremely rare. They're worth more than $1,800 with full bands today. As you can see, our coins do not meet the entire band designation requirement. 
1967 Roosevelt time from Special Mint. Set magnificent copper nickel coin at mint stage 68 with deep cameo feature white on black appearance grits, the spectator of the superb deep cameo is poorly struck. Crisply struck features can be observed in Roosevelt's hair as vertical lines and torch bands until surfaces are nearly flawless. On January 9, 2014, it sold for $99,187.50 at 30 auctions. Do you know the Kennedy half dollar is the largest U.S. currency in circulation? As the name suggests, the half dollar commemorates America's favorite president, John F. Kennedy assassinated on November 22, 1963. Designed by Gilroy Roberts and Frank Gasparro, the 1971 half-dollar features J.F. Kennedy on the obverse and the presidential seal on the reverse. It stands out because it's the first American coinage with a copper-nickel composition. The 1971 half-dollars do not command a high value because they were produced in millions, and most still survive. However, some pieces, especially in MS-67 and MS-68 grades, command a premium because they are rare. Today, we'll learn about the 1971 Kennedy Half Dollar, including its background, value, and errors. Whether you are a beginner or a specialist in rare coins, we hope you find this article helpful. The 1971 Half Dollar Obverse Design is one of the greatest works by Chief Engraver Gilroy Roberts. It showcases a bust of the assassinated President J.F. Kennedy facing left. The words, Liberty, arch above the late president's head, slightly covered by his hair. Below the profile lies the phrase, In God We Trust, divided into two sections. The minting date and mark fall at the bottom of the bust. For the 1971 half-dollar reverse, designer Frank Gasparro modified his design from the Kennedy Appreciation Medal. In 1962, J.F. Kennedy had the U.S. Mint design 300 appreciation medals, which he presented to several nations during his 1963 trips. The reverse design depicts several elements from other coins. At the center, you can see the image of the presidential seal. The seal includes the heraldic bald eagle as its main design element. With wings outstretched and the president's coat of arms on its chest, the eagle holds a bundle of arrows and an olive branch in its talon to symbolize the nation's readiness for war and desire for peace. The Latin motto, E Pluribu Unum, falls above the bird's head, and below it, you can find the coin's denomination. Arch on top is the inscription, United States of America, separated from the eagle design by a ring of 50 stars. One thing that separates the 1971 half dollar from its earlier version is its metal composition. Initially, the Kennedy half dollar comprised 90% silver and 10% copper, but the U.S. Mint later transitioned to a new metal composition of 40% silver and 60% copper. In 1971, the Mint eliminated silver from the half dollar completely, ushering in the age of copper nickel half dollar coins. The 1971 half dollar comprises 91.67% copper and 8.33% nickel. It weighs 11.34 g, 0.4 ounces, and has a diameter of 30.61 mm, 0.08464 inches. It also comes with a reeded edge dot. In 1971, the U.S. government struck half-dollar coins in three centers, namely Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. The units from the Philadelphia Mint bear no mint marks but pieces from Denver and San Francisco come with the D and S mint marks. Now let's break down each 1971 half-dollar variety. In 1975, the Independence Hall reverse by Seth G. Huntington replaced Frank's design. In 1971, the Minting Center in Philadelphia produced over 155 million Kennedy half-dollar coins. Like previous units, the 1971 half-dollar coins from Philadelphia have no mint mark. Although the mint didn't have the highest mint that year, nearly all pieces entered circulation. That explains why it's difficult to find a 1971 half-dollar specimen in uncirculated condition. However, they are not super rare. According to NGC, a 1971 no-mint-mark half-dollar in circulated condition can sell for slightly more than its face value, or about 60 cents. Those in the mint state have a higher value and can fetch around $35 or more. However, there are a few 1971 half-dollars that have reached impressive prices. 
In 2018, a high-grade 1917 no-mint mark half-dollar sold for $1,560. Another piece graded by NGC at Mint State 67 sold for $2,900 earlier this year. Because both of the quarters in this video sold for a high price, you should be on the lookout for them. Guys, we do this professionally for a livelihood, and we want to make sure you have the knowledge you require so you never again overlook a rare coin. Consequently, these statehood quarters are well known to us all. If you're not, they're highly collectible. But unless it's one of the quarters you see in this movie, they're usually not worth that much money. S, let's get started straight now on 19 at 9,920. Five cent Pennsylvania state hood quarter, rated by NGC as Mint State 69, sold for $7,050. What you should be aware that unless they are in perfect shape, most of the time these coins won't be very valuable. You should now send the best condition coins when you submit your coins for grading. Numerous times. Even if a coin does return graded this highly, it won't be worth your money to do so because most coins won't. Back, and it gets pretty good marks. You're unfortunate since this coin, which sold for $7,050, brought in $17,250. This is a PCGS proof, 70 rated 1999S 25 cent Delaware silver quarter. Therefore, the S mint mark you can see there below reads, In God We Trust, referring to the San Francisco mint, which manufactured this coin. In particular, proof coins like this one in this high of a grade are highly sought after and collected which is why it sold for $17,125. Dime Value. Discover the worth of your 1936 dime with our comprehensive value guide. Whether you're a numismatist or simply curious about antique coins, we've got you covered with all the information you need to know about the value of this iconic coin. From rare errors to pristine condition specimens, we'll explore the factors that impact its value and help you determine what your 1936 dime is really worth. The 1936 P. No Mint Mark dime was produced in massive quantities at the U.S. Philadelphia Mint. So there's no wonder if you find some of them in your inherited coin collections or at the thrift shops. These coins were widely circulated and used in business activities. It's why the value of a circulated coin isn't more than its face value. However, if you find a circulated 1936 dime in good condition, Expect its worth to be between $2 to $3. In any case, these uncirculated 1936 dimes have MS grades, mint state. The higher the MS grade, the more value a coin has. For example, a 1939 no mint mark dime MS60 is valued between $1.10 to $1.15. But the same coin is sold for more than $1.105 at MS67. According to NGC, an MS-68 grade specimen was auctioned for $3,400 in 2018. This is the highest recorded sale at NGC, but you can get even better rates in current times. On the reverse side, there's a small D present right beside the E in the word 1. Apart from this, the design is exactly the same. But since the value depends on the condition, you should focus more on the grades. The circulated 1936 D-Mint Mark Dimes have a value of $3 in good condition. Please note that while these coins are said to be in good condition, much of their design is heavily flattened and faded. You will find no details in the hair of liberty or in the leaves of olive branches. In uncirculated versions, a 1936 D mint. Mark Dime can have a worth between $1.30 to $1.300. The exact value depends on the mint state, MS, grade. At MS 65, you should expect the worth to be $1.55 plus. However, at MS-68, the worth hikes up to $1,000. NGC sold an MS-68 specimen for $6,500 in 2-019. Another specimen in MS-67 was sold for $425. But the biggest auction value was recorded in 2017 by NGC when a collector purchased an MS-68 1936 S-Dime for $18,250.